What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and we are here for part 2 of our Madden 20 realistic rebuild of the Baltimore Ravens. We're getting down to the nitty gritty of remaining teams, so that's kind of why we're doing a rebuild of Baltimore, because literally we've done all the other kind of shittier teams. Through one, uh, the first episode, 5 years, not, not a great start, honestly. We got one divisional title. We've made the playoffs a couple times, but we only have one divisional title, and we've definitely struggled in the playoffs. Lamar Jackson has kind of played like Lamar Jackson in real life, been great in the regular season, kind of struggled in the postseason. Obviously, it's very, very small sample size of at least what Lamar Jackson is going to be in real life. Uh, it should be known. By now, I am a Lamar Jackson homer, and I hope that, you know, as long as it's not have any way to negatively affect my Philadelphia Eagles, I want to see Lamar Jackson ball out. And I'm really hoping year 6 through 10 here in this realistic rebuild, we can do so. Um, we got J.K. Dobbins as their lead back. Hollywood Browns up to a 91. We've drafted uh, Devonta Smith out of Alabama. Uh, we got Juju smith schuster stole him away from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's been playing strictly in the slot. And we have been, you know, it's, you know, I don't need to tell you this. You know, if you played Madden for the last decade, you put a guy in a slot in the sim, he's going to play well. And the numbers kind of speak for themselves. And generally, Juju, I would... I don't watch a lot of Pittsburgh games, but looking at his skill set, definitely has the skill set to be a very good slot wide receiver. I don't know if Pittsburgh uses him in the slot and they use him on outside, if he's strictly outside, but he's working in the slot on our scheme. Offensive line is, you know, the tackles are good. Stanley, 96, superstar, one of the best tackles in the game. Orlando Brown, more than solid. The interior, I mean, we have Stecker, who's an 80. He's only 24, but probably, you know, Probably continue, you know, bad and generated draft classes, all that noise to draft a center and another guard to build up the interior line. Mandrews at tight end is solid, 86 star. Flip into the defense. Uh, transitioning period, Clays Campbell no longer on the team. We have uh, Kenya Lester. I think we're going to make a D end here. Let's just make him a defensive end. Anyways, he's, he's way too undersized to be a 3 4 nose tackle. But we have Grissom, I think it's 320. So there you go. We got more of a prototypical. Actually, let's make him a right end. Because we have Christian Barmore, who, uh, for the love of God, I hope and pray. For those of you that are religious out there, pray that there's a college football season. Barmore is going to be a guy out of Alabama. I think he's going to get a lot of first round buzz. You might not know about him yet. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have a depth trade or anything crazy like that. But our front three is solid. It's definitely one of the strengths of this team. We got Marlon Humphrey, 95 X Factor. Mayberry, who drafted a superstar dev. A uh, young corner out of Vandy. Hopefully he can at least replace what we lost in Marcus Peters because Marcus Peters just regressed into oblivion here. Uh, we still got Earl Thomas. I don't know. He, he could retire any year. He's 36. So that might you know create another hole that we need to assess and address in free agency in the draft. Uh, Wheeler, solid though. He's 79. I think he's only going to get better. Lineback core, we have this guy, Wayne Rogan, 86 superstar dev, scheme fit as an edge rusher. We got Charles Snowden, 6'7", superstar edge rusher, scheme fit. Uh, it's beautiful. And inside, obviously, Patrick Queen doing his thing. And we got Love, who we just randomly drafted. So, uh, generally speaking, we are in a very good spot. It's just one of those rebuilds that have been weird. On a result standpoint, our team should probably be, have more divisional titles than just one. This is definitely a Super Bowl caliber squad, so it's still a little disappointing not having one. But we still got everything to play for here. Year 6 through 10, so let's get into it. But for the, four, uh, the first free agent period, we don't have any money. Like Quentin Williams, I mean, we don't really need that. But more so, Wyatt Davis would be a huge get. Uh, I don't even think we can offer him like minimum contract to, to get us above. Maybe? No, we're not even going to be close. So, yeah, going to have to sit out this free agency period. Draft recap time. Um, good draft. Solid draft. We wanted to fix the O-line. Uh, we have to have a... We have to view this in the scope of Madden, where pretty much all offensive linemen are interchangeable. So I just go best O-lineman available, and then you put them out at your position of need. And really outside of like moving a tackle to center, you're not going to have a big drop-off in overall. So we needed a guard. We need a left guard. And that's the plan. With a gigantic human being in Casey Boone, the tackle from USC. He was number three in true talent. 78 hit it down. I mean, 6'8, 322. Probably too long in real life to be a guard, but in Madden, it, it's plug and play. Uh, we got a 75 normal dev center. He's only 21, Craig Clark, out of Stanford Scheme Fit. So he most likely is also going to be a starter. Um, continuing to go with the high bench because there wasn't much in terms of skill position players in this draft. We got Brett Reynolds, 71 power Scheme Fit. In the fifth round, we got Shane Carter to AM, 72 with a hidden dev. 
He was top 20, I think he was number 21 or 22 in true talent. So with that dev trait, might give us uh, another, like he could be our guard. He could move him into guard, be an upgrade from a dev trait standpoint. Even though he might not be the same or the highest overall, you kind of want to gamble on the dev trait that, you know, it only takes him 3,000 XP to go up a spot versus 6-7 for the guy that could be ahead of him. So it could be a better play long term. And uh, we send out the rest of the draft. We get a 64 linebacker, 60 outside linebacker, and 58 tight end. So super early bye. Just wanted to kind of end on the note of that week three. Six to three victory over the Cincinnati Bengals. Nice. But we're undefeated. It's, I mean, it's way too early. We could just as easily lose the last 13 games. Um, but yeah. And I mean, I might as well look at some of our contracts here. First up, Juju Smith-Schuster. Pretty much need to pay that. He has been phenomenal in the slot for us. Ronnie Stanley, at his age, he should hold on to that rating fairly well. So we can get that up a couple ticks. Charles Snowden absolutely needs, needs to get paid. I would like to get Russ Love a new contract. I would like to get Stecker a contract. Well, now we'll be able to pay them. That's that's an entirely different story. But that's kind of like, I pretty much want to keep all my good players. And unfortunately, we probably won't have enough to give Earl Thomas a one-year deal. But it's about time we find his heir at the free safety spot anyways. We got to win. Oh, we did. We won and got out of the playoffs. Week 17, everything was on the line. We didn't get a divisional title. It's still a little annoying. Tied with the Browns. I guess they had the tiebreaker. But at least we get to find out who the more deserving team is right away in the wild card round. Uh, Lester had a chance to go up to X Factor. Did not hit it. Upgrade our players here just a little bit. Juju's now 99 club, which is pretty cool. Uh, in terms of hidden devs, on the O-line, Boone came out star dev. We don't know what Carter... What? I have no idea what Carter's going to be, but he developed a lot as, as a backup. There's a good chance he is a star. <laughs> but he can replace Stecker, which is good. We, we don't have enough money to play Stecker. We're going to be very tight against the salary cap because we gave up over a $100 million contract for Juju smith Uster. We have Lamar on the $200 million contract. Uh, Stanley's getting paid big time money, over a hundred million dollars for Snowden. It's, it's it's expensive. It's getting expensive for sure, but we're able to make it work. Look at the stats: Lamar Jackson, solid, twelfth in yards, fourth in touchdowns, thirty-eight hundred passing yards, thirty-five tutties, uh, twelve hundred yards, eight touchdowns for J.K. Dobbins. Great year for him. Receiving Juju, twelve hundred yards, twelve touchdowns, and that was me forgetting to move him into the slot for half the season. So he absolutely feasted. Uh, Hollywood Brown, okay. Andrews, okay. Devontae Smith, okay. Dobbins, man, that's that's a real nice year from J.K. Dobbins. Double-digit tutties. 98 tackles, Patrick Queen, four sacks, two picks. We got 10 sacks, Lester, seven and a half, Wayne Rogan. See, again, man, it's one of those deals where, like, we just gave up $100 million because he's one hell of a pl prospect, but the end result, it's, I don't know, man, that could come back to bite us in the ass. Marlon Humphrey, four picks. I mean, he was sensational. He was debatably the MVP. From part one of the three, it was Marlon Humphrey controlling that secondary. Searles is the MVP for the Bears. Just some random guy. Jaden Middle. I don't know. What do we got here in the AFC? Where's our guys? Where's some Ravens? Juju Smith-Schuster, number one wideout. Hell yeah. That's all we got as we gear up to run the gauntlet to try and win our first Super Bowl of the rebuild. And it starts immediately finding out who the top team in the AFC North was in the 2025 season. All right, let's go. Let's get after it. Cleveland, Baltimore. Pretty disappointing first quarter, but it can only go up. We can only play better, right? So we get a touchdown here. Cut it to three. It's only one score. We got Justin Tucker, who's probably the only really bad contract on our team, and still he's one hell of a kicker. I don't really regret having him on. I think it's like a $6 million cap hit. As long as he keeps making his kicks. It makes the clutch kicks. We don't miss ones in the third, qu fourth quarter. You know, second half. That could come back to bite us in the ass. But here we go. All the momentum here in the fourth quarter. Going the way of the Cleveland Browns. We have the ball. Maybe last. Any points here would be great. We kick the field goal. It said Justin Tucker, but a buck 24 for the Browns. Not enough. Not enough. The Ravens are the creme de la creme in the AFC North. Lamar Jackson, three touchdowns on the game. As we are moving on to the next round. Three Tennessee Titans. Not gonna lie, pretty much shocking when I saw that they were there. But, okay, they still got Derrick Henry. You know? We know Ryan Tannehill. I don't know if Ryan Tannehill would still be there. He probably is retired by this point. I saw they had Rondale Moore at wide receiver. The electrifying playmaker out of Purdue. 
But, uh, yeah, real low scoring game, but Baltimore gets the first touchdown. We go into the second half with a lead. Tennessee able to get their first tutty of the game, but there we go, man. Just keeping that pace. Make it so that they, you know, they can't just get an instant touchdown and be in the lead and bump us from the playoffs. So there we go. Justin Tucker makes his kick. Our defense with an outstanding performance on the day. Trey Lance. I don't think so. Not today. 23-13. Baltimore gets the job done. J.K. Dobbins. He towed up that rock. 19 carries, 123 yards as Baltimore here in year six have made the AFC Championship game. I think for the first time. No messing around. No messing around. It's a snow game. We should put these dudes on skates. Lamar Jackson be impossible to tackle. And we got the best kicker in the game. So it's if it's a clutch, tough, against the elements type field goal, I, I you know there's no other kicker I'd rather have than Justin Tucker. So we're up 10-3, 13-3. Feels like it will, you know, definitely could be one of those low scoring games that Baltimore and New England ever played that was like super high scoring. It's usually their defenses that uh, come to play. Look at that, man. Have yet to give up a touchdown. There's the instant touchdown. We did a great job through three quarters of uh, stopping their offense. And there we go. That might be enough to get the dub. I mean, they're taking way too long to score. Two minutes. Let's kill the game off. Kill it. There we go. Suck it, Belichick. 27 to 20, Baltimore. 80, almost 83% completion percentage for Lamar Jackson, outdueling Jordan Love. More so is the defense on the day in Baltimore in year six, heading to the Super Bowl. And a quick preview of your Super Bowl Miami matchup. We're going up against the 10 and 5 New York Giants. What are they dealing with? What are they working with, huh? What do they got under the hood? Saquon, JC Jackson's an X Factor. They got Aaron Donald. Then outside of that, they have Andrew Thomas, Jalen Waddle, Monty Rice, Jabril Peppers, and a random generated corner, Arsenio Broyles. Great name. Terrific name. All right, they're a solid team, but push comes to shove. I think I'm giving the slight edge in terms of talent to the Baltimore Ravens. Super Bowl, it's only year six, so I don't think I'm going to hop in. I want to just see if the Sim team can, you know, handle, take care of business. And our very first Super Bowl appearance of the rebuild. Looking for Super Bowl, I don't what would it be, the third? In Ravens franchise history, it's a rainy game. So the team that can run the ball better should win. I would argue that while they do have Saquon Barkley, the combination of J.K. Dobbins and Lamar Jackson on our side would give us the advantage in running the ball. So it's ugly game. Why did we get any points there? That's frustrating. Down 10, down 3. Defense needs to get us. Oh, my God. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. No. No! Stealing victory from the jaws of... Stealing, what is it? Stealing defeat from the jaws of victory right there. Oh, that was harsh. What? Give me the scoring summary here. Fourth quarter. Lamar Jackson... They got a 57-yard field goal in 22 seconds. Sucks. That's brutal. That is brutal. To top it all off, the second scoop of bullshit on our shit sandwich here. Nine million dollars in the red. So I pretty much shaved off every bit of fat that I possibly could from our roster. And we still got to free up like four or five million bucks. So... There's, there's just two kind of obvious ones. First up, it's J.K. Dobbins. Even though we're eating some dead money, we do free up some salary cap. Um, and the other one is our tight end, Mark Andrews. That's kind of a big contract for a tight end that really hasn't, you know, that's bad regression. That's like a five. What was he, 86, 85? Having that big of regression. We're going to have some dead money, but at least we can play football in year seven. Draft recap time. Pretty good draft outside of not being able to find a tight end. I will take it. I simmed it out, and ooh, we actually got a 69 tackle. Cool. But I, my final pick was here in the fourth round. We got Amar. That's definitely a, the most Amari I've ever seen. But he's a 70 normal. We got a 71 safety. We got a, this quarterback. Again, it's just one of those things where, like, you see it in your drafts, I'm sure. We're like, this, you know, first-round grade quarterback's just still slipping. So maybe, you know, we're not drafting Lamar Jackson's replacement, but could be potential trade bait, especially for a late second rounder. I could flip it into a first or a starter at another position, depending on what that dev trade is. So, yeah, we got that. Uh, we got a 70 safety because we, we do, between these two, would be nice to see if we could find Earl Thomas's replacement. 
Well, because we had to move on from J.K. Dobbins, had to go grab a running back. We got a scheme fit here. Harvey Hubbard at a Penn State 74 hit in dev power back. Speed's not going to be great. 88 speed, 92 acceleration, but uh, I, I think he's pretty well rounded. And it's good to have a guy that I think can at least carry the load and pick up where J.K. Dobbins left off. We gear up for year seven. Here's how our sauced up team is looking 89 overall with a 92 offense. We got Lamar Jackson doing what he does best. Brand new running back, Harvey Hubbard. No other changes. Offensive line, we got the two new star dev youngsters. Normal dev, youngster at center. So we, we really started with saying, let's fix the interior of this line. Did exactly that. Now, we did have to lose J.K. Dobbins, which was annoying, but we have his replacement. We did have to lose Mark Andrews. And while he looks okay, we have a 79 tight end. He's a blocking tight end. I don't know how much, you know, that's going to play in the matter. I don't know if he'll play like a receiving tight end. They'll just look at his rating. But, uh, yeah, going to have a hole there at tight end, which is kind of weird given Baltimore seems like maybe more so than any organization places that importance on the tight end position. Uh, defensively, remains, you know, exactly the same for the most part. No more Earl Thomas. We're going to go with Delmas as our starting free safety. Massive shoes to fill, but at least he's a scheme fit. We didn't have money to pay Love, our linebacker, too. So we have a big drop-off in... At least, you know, perceived talent there. We have Davion Taylor, though. Former Eagle. He might he might actually be a better upgrade. He was 67 was the other... I move him in. Yes, yeah, it's not... Well, what about this guy? What, what, how is... No, that makes no sense. How are you a, a speed rusher at 225? You know what I'm saying? Either way, uh, we're still good. We're still definitely good. Would love to get that second divisional title here in year number seven. Anyway, point three and four, a little bit off the mark, tied for last, but still, you know, not a couple a couple strong weeks, a couple off weeks for Cincy, or we could just be right on top. Let's actually sim this one to see how well, because this could be a big win against the Cleveland Browns ahead of us in the stand, and we get fucking smoked. Okay, contracts. Don't know how much money we have. Probably not a lot, but let's see. Well... Corner is the hardest position to draft. And we already have a superstar, so I'd like to keep him. Obviously, we know what we're getting with Lester. He's really, really solid. We got him locked up. Um, that's a that's a really... What's this look like at five years? Under five mil for a guy that could very well develop into a 90D tackle. Definitely Orlando Brown would like to keep him, but he's easily the most expendable because we can we have linemen. We have tackles that we slid into guard that we could slide back out to tackle. So, um, yeah, we'll make sure we lock up. We'll make sure we lock up the corner there, Mayberry. And, yeah, hopefully our salary cap. Well, hopefully we're just at least not in the red next offseason. Do your seven to make the playoffs. Ah, you know, ah, last of the division. Ah, you know, it's not good. Uh, please have a good depth trade on the running back. Superstar! Hey, it is! At least some sort of victory. We replaced a star dev J.K. Dobbins with a cheaper, younger superstar running back. Did we, didn't we have another hidden dev? I feel like we had one more. Maybe not. Kind of maybe yes, no. No, we did not. But hey, I'll take that for the running back. Zach Lewis. Oh, no, it was the backup quarterback. What's he saying? Ah! X-Factor! Boom! And he, no one was picking him. He was still, like, he was a first-round, mid-first-round talent and slipped to the end of the second. We got a trade piece. We have an absolute, and that's a terrible ability. So we got a trade piece here for, psh, I don't even know what we really need. We could flip it for a tight end. We could flip it for a corner, a safety, another linebacker. We're going to make some moves this offseason with that. So... Not all doom and gloom. Hopefully we don't get fired. Surprise. I don't think we will because we made the playoffs not long ago. Lamar Jackson, eighth in touchdowns with 30. Hubbard, not actually a great year. Lamar had to pick up some slack. Over 1,000 yards for Juju. Again, he's been outstanding. And look at that, man. That's a blocking tight end with 600 yards, seven touchdowns. I don't think we need to really worry about the tight end. I mean, something in the sim probably doesn't correlate between blocking and receiving. They just look like, oh, he's an 80 tight end. These should be his sim numbers, I guess. I'm making that assumption. Patrick Queen, great season, 121 tackles, 10 TFL, 6 sacks, 2 picks. We had 12 and a half sacks from Lester, got himself a new contract. And, oh my God, man, Snowden on $100 million. Just because you're not like our sub-package D-end 
doesn't mean you should. Uh, I mean, maybe he's just not on the field. Is there anything that shows like their snaps? Downs played. He played. That is disgusting. 988 downs played, and you have three and a half seconds. I get it. He's 6'7", 230, and if you've seen him play, he's not hes not that lengthy edge rusher. He, he's like a do-it-all. He literally plays like a 4'3 outside linebacker at 6'7". He's solid in coverage, but I don't know, man. I'm expecting more. Look at the yearly awards. MVP went to Trey Lance of the Tennessee Titans in the AFC. I don't think we're going to see many Baltimore Ravens on this list. We didn't get one. We didn't get one goddamn Raven. Complete piss away of a year. Let's get into the offseason and into year eight. And to top it all off, I just want I just didn't want to be in the red. And we're in the red. Seven and a half million bucks. Okay. So, bad news is, to get in the red, we had to get, you know, one of these underperformers off. And that's Hollywood Brown. He hasn't, he's been completely, you know, outshined by Juju Smith-Schuster. I get we've had Juju in the slot, but still... You can't have two very expensive wide receivers, and he's starting to regress. So we threw in Hollywood Brown and our superstar X-Factor quarterback to get the number one overall pick from the quarterback desperate Detroit Lions. I think that's a very smart decision. I mean, in the realm of Madden, would you give up the first overall pick for an X-Factor quarterback that's getting ready to enter his second season? 100%. 10 times out of 10. You take the devil you know versus the devil you don't. And in this scenario, the devil's probably going to be a guy that goes on and wins the Lions a couple Super Bowls. So we got the number one overall pick, which is, you know, we need to hit on that because we need some cheap rookie contracts to stay afloat here because we are just drowning every offseason by being, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars over the salary cap. That trade, Holly Brown, we're actually kind of in the green here. So I'm going to try to bring back Justin Tucker on a one year so we don't just get rid of some of our original Baltimore Ravens. At least bring one back in house. We have a lot of options with this number one pick. Um, I kind of wrote down our positions of need. We need a guard, wide receiver, obviously to replace Hollywood Brown, uh, inside linebacker, free safety, and corner. So clearly out there, there are three free safeties that look pretty good. We got Felder, who looks the best of the bunch as an early first round talent here. Uh, Ingles could be nice, could potentially slip out of the first. Or we have Corn Blake, who has a mid first round talent in the second round. We have um, a guy's okay chance at maybe getting him. But I think the best player, the single best prospect that was really on our board is Eddie Smart. 6'3", wide receiver, out of Ohio State. 4'3", speed at 6'3", A-minus catching. I think we go with this guy to, to really solidify that wide receiver core yet again. And then hopefully we can get that safety in the second round. So with the number one overall pick, Baltimore is selecting Eddie Smart out of Ohio State. 75 hit at dev, number nine in true value. Again, I'm not so worried about that because obviously we, we could have drafted. I could have told you other guys at other positions probably going to be a better player. But we 100% at this point, especially with our salary cap, man, we can't just go BPA. We have to get four needs. And this guy looks pretty damn good. I definitely thought 437 speed would be more than 92 speed, 90 acceleration. But, I mean, this guy looks like an absolute beast. With our first round pick, I picked, well, like, see, look, I'll show you right now. I guarantee, like, this guy, Carlos Alexander, 75, 7.5 combine grade, early first, like, he's going to be a 77, 78. Uh, this guy's probably pretty good up here. Where is it? This guy, Craig, first in a lot of things. But again, we don't need anything on the D-line, which is unfortunate because this guy's probably really, really good. Uh, so we need guard and corner and safety. There's no corners in this draft. So we're going to grab uh, this guy. We'll get Marlon Ingles. First round. Come on. 74 hidden depth. Number 12 in true talent at pick 12. Scheme fit. Nice. And now it's just time to stun on him. We got the number two, <laughs> number two true talent in the second round. Javon Pilgrim out of Penn State. 76 speed rusher. You know, kind of hope he can develop into a middle linebacker. Honestly, we might have to put Snowden at middle linebacker. Or something crazy like that to get this guy on the field and maximize the talent we have back there. To finish up the draft, we did a good job. Pretty solid job. I didn't. I wanted to get a punter, but I didn't have enough picks to get him, so I just went BPA. We got 68 wide out, 66 corners, 66 linebackers, 69 tackle, and a 71 guard to round out a very, very good draft. I mean, the fact that our first three premier picks were all hidden devs, again, let's just roll with the odds that at least one, at least one, is something better than a star dev. 
Year 8, looking at our team. So offensively, no more Hollywood Brown. Big shoes to fill for our number one overall pick, Eddie Smart. I mean, what, has a wide receiver ever gone number one overall? Like Keyshawn Johnson might have been like the last one or something crazy like that. Uh, offense line I'm happy with. Offense generally, no issues, no worries. And it was awesome that we were able to land a superstar running back last year. Defensively, though, I got a little creative. Snowden had good coverage stats. Really solid coverage stats for a guy that's 6'7". But we have a 6'7 middle linebacker. High 70s zone coverage, man coverage. I mean, it's not that great, but it, it makes sense. It's putting our best players on the field. That gives us the chance with Pilgrim, who was, what, number two in true value, getting him on the field as well. And it, it, hopefully it's not too bad. And him and Patrick Queen can, can work it out. And this is going to be a, a great thing for this defense. Uh, we're going to have Ingles be our starting free safety and that's it, man. That is where we're at here. Year number eight. Definitely think this team should be playoff bound. And midway point of year eight. Three and four again. Absolutely not where we want to be. <laughs> Tie for last yet again. What is going on? Do we have any of our depth traits? The wide receiver still doesn't have his. The uh, outside pilgrim is a star. Ingles is superstar. So at least we got one of our superstars. But why is this team struggling to win games? What is going on here? And it's Lamar Jackson just not... I mean, did losing Hollywood Brown really kill all of our momentum? I also put the young wide receiver in that slot. Maybe we go back to Juju. We can find more success there as he was our most effective offensive player. Either way, what do we got for contracts? First off, we got Wayne Rogan. I, I don't think I can pay that for, like, $177 million for... A, <laughs> no, not doing it. We already we already kind of burnt ourselves on Stoughton. I'm not paying $177 million for a guy <laughs> who has seven sacks over the last two years. I cannot, will not do that. However, Marlon Humphrey, who's been sensational, I'll give him a one-year deal. Pretty much pay him whatever he wants. Um... This tight end, for whatever reason, has been actually playing solid. I think we can give him a contract, even if even if he is just a blocking tight end. And hmm, that's probably it. Wheeler at strong safety. I mean, that's not a bad contract, honestly. If he takes that, oh, okay, you can want more money. But I'm absolutely. I'll tell you right now, we might we might come back on Wheeler. We're definitely gonna come back on Marlon Humphrey, but there's no way. There is no way. We could justify... I mean, how many sacks is he at now, though? Is he having his breakout contract year year? He's at five sacks already. So he probably is getting ready to, to have his best year ever. I just... I don't know. We'll wait and see. If he gets... If he gets 12 sacks, I'll give him a contract offer at the end of the season. I go even look at this. We got a first round bye, 9-7. and seven. Our second division... I thought for sure we weren't making the playoffs this year. All right, slow clap. Decent, and we're taking on an eight-win team. That's phenomenal. Uh, we were waiting to see the depth trade of the wide receiver Smart, which should be unveiled now, and it's an X Factor. Let's go, Eddie Smart, superstar X Factor with Most. Hell yeah, we just we just straight up traded Hollywood Brown away, and his replacement, the number one overall pick, superstar X Factor with Most. Let's go. I'm going to put you right on the outside here. Well, you're an outside wide receiver anyway because Juju's in the slot. That is huge. Big, massive, duh, boss man, you know? Those Arsenal TV memes. But looking at Lamar, solid. Almost 3,900 yards, 33 touchdowns, five interceptions. We got 1,000 yards, seven tutties for Hubbard. Nice. And anytime you get a running back over 1,000 yards. Oh, my controller died. Anytime you get a running back over 1,000 yards, that's, that's pretty much your bare minimum. And I'm thinking back to... The production that we have with J.K. Dobbins, it's a little off the mark, but it's not its not outrageous. You know, it's not like, oh my God, we absolutely made the wrong decision releasing J.K. Dobbins to get, you know, for he was essentially a calf casualty at 27, which you just don't see, but I'm happy there. Juju, 1,300 yards, 13 tutties. Like seeing those numbers defensively, 100 tackles, Patrick Queen. We got 11 and a half sacks, Wayne Rogan. I said 12. I said 12. So he's... Oh, I really, I wish there was like a live stream that I could be like, do I pay this guy? Because I mean, that's a really good year. That's, that's a franchise edge rusher type year. But I wonder if he hits the open market, if it'd be cheaper. 
I think I, I think I'll gamble. If he hits the open market, I still will want to resign him. We still have enough salary cap, that he, but it might not be 177 million dollars that he's looking for. You know what I'm saying? What is he? 25. He's a 93 superstar. It might be. It might be that expensive though. But I think that's a gamble I'm willing to take. Uh, Yuli Ward's MVP went to this guy, Middlebrooks, AFC Josh Allen, Sam, uh, any Ravens. Come on, Juju Smith-Schuster, number one wide receiver in the AFC. And in year eight, we got a chance here. We got a legit chance. Eight win Raiders team. We were, our record wasn't much better. Uh, definitely for a first round bye team. We had a pretty embarrassing nine and seven should not be a first round bye, but it is. And it was. And our defense has yet to give up a touchdown in the first half until they get an instant tutty. Oh, I hope the Sim is fake. I know we're not going to be getting a lot in Madden 21 and definitely not getting anything in franchise. But, man, would this, imagine some Sim tweaking. If that was that came in, that would be an appreciated improvement. Down seven. Come on. Come on, Lamar. Get the job done. Bye. Uh, uh -oh. All right, we got a chance. Buck 07, no timeouts. This should be easy work for Lamar Jackson. Big field goal, and we don't make it. Guess that's what you get when you don't have Justin Tucker on your roster. We lost to Alan Bowman in the ring. Oh. I mean, we, we threw the ball well. Juju over 100 yards. Eddie Smart with over 100 yards. Just, I don't know. Too little, too late. Let's get into year nine. Nope, contract still the same. 90, 177 mil. I, can't, I just can't do it, man. I can't do it. Consider we could get... What? Speed rusher. Speed, we could literally get... I could get his replacement. For like... <laughs> yes, sir! We'll, we'll, give, we'll give this guy the money. Something like that to be your replacement. Three year, 45 and a half mil. Coming in top bid. He's only... Five points lower. Give me that, son. Nice. I mean, we kind of just did what the Baltimore Ravens had to do in real life with, like, Zadarius Smith. Remember, they had to let him go. And they knew he was good. But they still, they just couldn't afford to pay him what he was looking for. And now, you know, they're, they're, they're moving on. And that's what we're kind of doing here. So, able to uh, get Emmanuel Vincent, who we're going to make uh, the right outside linebacker we need. Shouldn't take much of a hit. So we literally just swapped out a 93 superstar for an 88 star. Yeah, you know, superstar ability, whatever. But for 177 million versus, what the hell, the $50 million I gave this guy. That's smart roster management, C4. If we're a second to the last draft of this rebound, I think we did an okay job. Uh, in the first round, we got Zach Lynn, a corner out of Wyoming, 74 normal. Uh, we got no dev traits. I got the best fullback I've ever seen. He had a 7-0 combine grade, 73. This guy's actually kind of a manimal. A little bit of a manimal. Uh, special teams picks weren't great. There was a guy, an edge rusher in the first round, who I, I kind of just want to sneak a peek at what he looked like. Because it's one of those things, in retrospect, you know, if we didn't draft or didn't sign that edge guy in free agency, we would have had a shot at him. He was an outside linebacker, and it was this guy, Sean Stewart. Hey, he's a normal dev. So, at least from a dev trade standpoint, we're probably still ahead. So, happy with the draft class. Let's move on to year nine. So, year number nine, still one of the upper echelon teams in the NFL. Uh, in terms of offensive changes, none. We're going to have Smart go on the outside, our two X factors. Our O line is, is okay. It's acceptable. We kind of have one weak spot at guard, but other than that, I think it's manageable. Um, defensively, we got, you know, change of the guard here, but I think we did great business by bringing in Vincent. I am a, probably at the end of the year going to compare Vincent's stats to wherever, uh, Rogan went to, but I'm, I'm, I'm generally very happy with this team. We are starting to see some regression. Marlon Humphrey's regressed out of the nineties, but other than that, teams remaining steady. And I think from top to bottom, going to be one of the more complete squads. Just need Lamar to play like MVP Lamar. Give me two seasons to finish out this rebuild of MVP Lamar. That's all I'm asking. Why? Three and four again at the midway point. Maybe we can turn around. We might get fired. We honestly might get fired with another bullshit season. Which is not good. It's not what we want to be. Especially how well we've kind of managed to maintain the high level of roster. The fact that it's not translating on the field. 
It's very frustrating. Uh, contracts. These are guys that we want for the fifth, uh, the tenth and final year. So definitely want to keep Patrick Queen. Come back for him. Ronnie Stanley. Sure. Why not? Come back. Stay with the team. Okay. Marlon Humphrey. That'd be great for him to run the whole the whole thing. Be one of the old guard. Not going to be able to replace. That's another thing you kind of think about. Can we replace guys that we're walk? We're going to let walk in free agency. Most likely won't be able to replace that. Most likely won't be able to replace this man. Shane Carter at guard. Probably couldn't replace our starting center either. So we're, we're getting a little tight here with the salary cap, but I still think we're going to have more than enough money to ensure that we can get Marlon Humphrey, uh, or not Marlon Humphrey, but Ronnie Stanley and Patrick Queen locked up to long-term deals. But it's looking like we're not going to have any money to splurge on that big final free agent, if there even is one in the following offseason. Well, everything to play for in year 10, I suppose. Uh, nine and seven. We made it close, a close race in the AFC North, but just too little too late. Um, statistically, Lamar played fine. 31 touchdowns with seventh in the league. We got over 1,000 yards from our running backs. Juju went over 1,000. Smart had 12 touchdowns. Okay, so far everything looks pretty good. Um, Lester had 13 and a half sacks. We only got ooh, five and a half from Vincent. Marlon Humphrey, four picks. I do want to see where Rogan's at. Do we make the right decision? Oh, God. Well, I mean, uh, okay, I guess the question would be, was is that kind of year, 12 and a half sacks, worth a, almost $200 million? No. So I, we made we made the good decision, even though we're sitting here not in the playoffs. And I don't know, did Tennessee make the playoffs? Or is Tennessee going home early like us? They actually barely made the playoffs. We had the same record. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I just might as well see who won the MVP. Probably some random quarterback we've never heard of. And it is. So let's get into year 10. All right. Well, it's fitting. It's on course. We're in our uh, final year, for, and we got to gotta make some cuts. News is that there's, there's a clear-cut roster move we can make to get in the green. Let's move in Devonta Smith, who was part of our first draft class. And has been here, been here for a minute. I mean, he never really had a breakout year, but it's been a solid year. I mean, he's only ever really been a wide receiver three, and then getting those kind of numbers from a wide receiver three, you know, it's not bad. But unfortunately, you have to be sacrificed so that we can field a team in the 10th and final year of this rebuild. Well, draft, it was, you know, wasn't as strong. I got this guy here had all Bs, mid-first round talent. He was 72 normal. So as soon as I saw that, I knew that, you know, there probably wasn't going to be a whole lot here in this draft. We got 67 normal wideout, 70 normal guard, couple whiffs. It's just, you know, I mean, it's, it's really tough year 10 anyways to find starters. So it is what it is. And this is it. All or nothing. 88 overall squad. All the cards are on the table. Got to go out and do the damn thing. Uh, in terms of offense, obviously we're one wide receiver short. Everything else remains pretty much the same. Defensively, pretty much the same. Got everyone back. Mayberry went from a superstar to a superstar X-Factor, so hopefully that will help. Uh, we're starting to see some regression here from Snowden and a couple points there for Marilyn Humphrey, but generally speaking, this team's peaking. We are peaking. Come on. Reward me. Reward me for doing a good job, Madden. And drum roll, please. At the end of year 10, 12 and 4. Because our team's been so bad, I'm going to prove that I didn't do fudging to try to make it an exciting year 10. Why? Why did it take this long to get our third divisional title? I wish I could tell you, but at least it happened in year 10. Better late than never. Statistically, Lamar played like MVP Lamar. Second in the league in touchdowns with 37. We got 1,200 yards, five tutties for Harvey Hubbard. Uh, Fuller, random guy that just obviously played in the slot because I didn't really mess with the depth chart. 13 touchdowns. Defensively, Patrick Queen over 100 tackles. 11 sacks for Lester, 9 from Vincent. Okay, interceptions definitely down. Definitely not what you want to see on your interceptions when you have two X-Factors starting. Your the awards MVP went to Herbert. Lamar Jackson at number 5 in the AFC. Unfortunately, we had nobody, but that's fine. It's all about teams. We had that first round bye. We could sit back, kick, relax, enjoy that third divisional title, and no that I can actually come in on this year 10 playoffs that things start looking kind of weird and try to make this a successful rebuild. So we kick things off right away. I mean, I think it's conclusive that we're the best team in the North, but hey, let's go and prove it against the runners-up 
the 9-7 Browns in the divisional round. Oh, I will come in if things look weird over elite, like they get like four or five instant touchdowns. But I'm thinking with how well our team played this year, that should correlate to, you know, playing well and executing in the sim. As you can see, jumping out 21 points here, looking to add more in the first half. And we get it 28 to 6 and we kick a field goal. I mean, this one's pretty much over. Nice. Going to at least the championship in year 10 is minimum. I feel like unless... Unless we've won Super Bowls in years past, that's kind of like my target goal. Like, if setting your target actually meant something at the beginning of your franchise, I would say championship game in year 10. Please don't find a way to choke this, for fuck's sakes. Okay, we're coming in. Unbelievable. Unbelievable that it's come to this. We'll just run and get the first down. I'm going to be worried, though. We might as well just come in and win this one in overtime. I am not going to let the sim do that blow a i don't even know what it was a third a 28 point lead or something like that maybe even more ain't gonna let it happen we got lamar jackson let's i've never actually been able to play with him in this game that's at least since he was an x factor so let's see if we can maybe scramble is this scrambling scary oh it feels pretty good it feels pretty good feels pretty good chief Walk-off touchdown. We're going to the championship game. Always the Chargers. Why is it always the Chargers? I can never sneak out of an AFC rebuild without seeing the Chargers at this point in the playoffs. You know? Kudos to them. One hell of an underrated roster. So, so far, we've struggled to get any touchdowns. Our defense has done a good job containing the Chargers. But it's a lot of field goals. And field goals are not going to win you this game. So we get a touchdown before the end of the first half. So I would at least suggest that momentum is trending our way. We get an instant touchdown in the third quarter. Defense playing out of their minds right now. We are going to hopefully go to the Super Bowl on the back of our defense bringing us to this spot. We get a fourth down stop, and there we go. Six-point victory. Lamar did enough. Harvey Hubbard, 150 yards. Chargers could not handle our rushing attack as Baltimore here in year 10. Heading to the Super Bowl. First Super Bowl of the rebuild. Super Bowl, the battle of the 12 and 4s. I like seeing this. See? Finally, it feels like the top... You know, if you, if you pulled the four best teams of the regular season, we're getting something like that played out here in year 10. It's not like a 7 and 8... 1, 7, 8 and 1 team. And, and just stuff that we've seen in years past. So let's see what they're doing, working with. They're in 83, so we're... We're a lot better. But who's going to be better on the day? They got Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, Debo Samuel, and Kendall Fuller. Kinlaw, Ayuk, Jared. I don't know if he's going to be their starting quarter. I'm assuming Goss not their starter. Okay. I think we can handle them. I think we can handle them and get a Super Bowl victory here. All right. Let's do this. Hey, wasn't this the Super Bowl of the year that the lights went out? Ray Lewis got their final one. The last Raven Super Bowl was this. Niners. Yeah, it was because it was the Harbaugh Bowl. All right. Well, it's looking like our team's handling business. I might just have to come in for the sake of coming in on the fourth quarter if it remains like this. What an outstanding job from our defense. Let's come in here. Let's get a touchdown. This one's over. My, I don't think my influence on this drive will impact the grand scheme of things. Let's go play action. Let's let's keep things open for Lamar to scramble. We got smart with his mom. I mean, no one has their abilities triggered. It would be nice if they did. Let's just take off with them. My God. Oop. Oop. Okay. He's unstoppable. He's an unstoppable. I, I feel for those of you that play Mutt in like competitive matchups where you have to deal with that on a consistent basis because I don't think I'd want any part. I'm, you know, I'm already, you know, a filthy D-line user as it is. It's just... Ooh, that was not the greatest throw, Lamar. I kind of want to score a touchdown with through the air, though. To try to, like, nerf the, well, he's just a running back meme. But it's just so, a different experience being able to do things like that with a mobile quarterback. Because I don't think any, any of my main franchises have ever had a legit mobile quarterback. I've had Colt Brennan. I've had, uh, oh, who's that guy? The Duke, P.J. Walker. You know, sub-65 overall QBs is what I usually am dealing with. Derek Carr. Trevor Lawrence. Not mobile guys. So, Nice. Successful rebuild. Start the slow clap. The, the purple and black confetti. Get it ready. The bus all over this field. Year 10 Super Bowl at the dime moments. Chalk up another successful one, which is good because anytime there's an L, 
I don't like holding L's. So uh, that does it for this rebuild. I'll, obviously, we'll go through the whole presentation. But we're going to be going back to the NFC for our next rebuild. We have three teams left in the NFC. We have Seattle, Carolina, and Minnesota. I feel like I kind of want to save Carolina a little bit because that's, that's easily out of those three teams. The most interesting rebuild. So I think it's between Seattle and Minnesota. Really could, I don't, I'm not partial either way. So, uh, you know, pretty much just throwing a dart at a board, whatever one we get. But if you have a personal preference, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Realistic Rebuild. Appreciate the support. We just broke 130,000 onto 150. Probably not going to hit that before Madden 21 because all the hype surrounding Madden 21 is absolutely gone. And I don't think I'm going to make clickbait videos to try to capitalize on it. So we're just here chilling. You know, winning Super Bowl MVP with Lamar Jackson. So thanks everyone for the support. Smash that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if it's your first time stopping by. And until next time, it is C4 saying peace out.